Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Welcome back. How have you all been? Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've been here, but uh, I've been sick, unfortunately. Uh, so forgive my raspy voice. If, uh, if it's annoying to you, please uh, feel free to roast me in the chat. Um, I'm here together with uh, my lovely colleague, Michiel, once hello, again. Hello, hello. Thank you everyone. for joining. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, how are you, Michiel? Is it, when is the last time you streamed? Last week. Last week. So I'm still uh, in the mood. Still in the mood, <laughs> yeah. It was a good stream. Nice. <laughs> yeah, today we're discussing uh, um, yeah, something, uh, something nice, something cool, something new, which is, uh, you can already see oh, behind me <laughs> this side, uh, MAG Infinite S3. But a very good idea to point at the giveaway as well. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, um, Unlimited revolution, as uh, the, the nice quote always says. Um, yeah. We'll hello, hello, you. Dushan. Welcome, welcome. We will show you. Welcome, welcome, guys. I see a lot of uh, regulars returning, so that's nice. Eduardas, Manuel, welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, if you have any questions during this live stream, um, uh, both TikTok and uh, YouTube and Twitch, uh, Facebook, Facebook and Twitter. Where we're streaming everywhere, <laughs> but we have the all, all the chats open. So uh, feel free to ask us some ask us some questions if you would like to know stuff. Um, uh, try to keep it on the subject a little bit if possible, uh, <laughs> which is this uh, this desktop. I already see an off-topic question. Asteroid is asking, how is the MSI Z690 H Wi-Fi DDR4 for 12900K? Fine. It's fine. Has a strong VRM, so it would run okay, especially at stock. Like but even a mild overclock would be okay. Only when you're doing extreme overclocking, of course, then you may need something extra. But other than that, fine. If Michiel says it, then it's fine. He's all. He's our our motherboard and CPU expert. Well, more than that, but That's we have a lot of product <laughs> groups nowadays. Michiel. I have a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> mostly components. Yeah, all the components. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So we also are running a giveaway. Um, I think our stream element bot will uh, uh, spam it in uh, every couple of minutes on the, in the Twitch chat and the YouTube chat. Unfortunately, not in the Facebook chat. So if you're watching on Facebook, uh, feel free to transfer over. Um, See, question from Chemi. No OnlyFans stream. Well, for us, it's still afternoon. That's what we do during the night. <laughs> That's our second life. <laughs> um, Paglamia is asking, what's your favorite kind of sandwich, Rob? My <laughs> favorite kind of sandwich? Oof, it's a good question. I think a classic BLT, yeah, like a good one, you know. I'm going for spicy chicken. Spicy chicken? Yeah. As far as asking, how does it compare with the Z690 torpedo? Edge is a bit stronger, so better VRM. You get a uh, a bit more rich feature set in terms of M.2 slots, connectors, those kind of things. So <laughs> the the edge is a little bit higher end than the, than the torpedo. Yeah, the content. What, what content would you make on OnlyFans, Michiel? Should I say that on public here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, well, you, you can post motherboard. No, I would just there. build mini ITX systems all the time. That's that would be nice. my OnlyFans account. You want to see my system? <laughs> you want to see how tiny it is? <laughs> <laughs> Click this link or, or buy this picture. <laughs> and you buy a picture of a PC. The tea is still too hot. Yeah. So um, anyway, anyway, I think we can uh, get into it. Oh yeah. By the way, the giveaway. Uh, if if you're not, uh, if you can't find the link, go to msi.com/two/insider. We'll be giving away multiple keys, multiple keys, <coughs> usually uh, throughout the stream. So uh, you can stick around to the end and still have a chance to win. There's a loyalty bonus as well. So if you do all the tasks that uh, that are in the Gleam description. Um, you will gain a loyalty bonus as well if you come back every week um, and you have more chance to win. A lot of people win in the loyalty bonus uh, nowadays, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. I think it's about 50 50 in terms of. I've seen some reoccurring winners. winners, even people that are just here every week and uh, they go for the giveaways. It's really hard. Michiel and OnlyFans with a small form factor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not always about big and OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not about size. It's what you do with it, right? <laughs> um, Astro is asking, do I need a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler for 1200K, or can I use my uh, D15? Depends a bit on if you want to run it 
at stock. Um, you should be able to run it with the D15, but still it, it will perform a little bit better once your cooling is better because it will be able to maintain higher speeds for a longer time. So then a 360 would benefit you more. So exam for example, if you would do extended rendering or something, then you will benefit from a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Are you only doing gaming? Then D15 will be fine because you're not running into that, um, that limitation um, in terms of thermals. Uh, Someone on TikTok is asking, can I have free <laughs> PC? I wish. I wish I could give it to you. It would be nice if we can just give everything away for free, Michiel. I'm not sure if that's the best business model for Amazon. No. Then this will be one of our last streams. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're not a charity. But sometimes we do give away PCs. Sometimes we are charity. <laughs> yeah. Depends on uh, if you maybe uh, maybe keep an eye on the streams, you know, and uh, and the social media. Then uh, you might be able to uh, to win one at Astro some point. Asteroid is asking, could you recommend a good airflow case? Oof. I can give you a sneak peek that we're working on something that you may want to keep an eye on in the coming months. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Ooh. <laughs> that was for OnlyFans, Michiel. <laughs> it's getting spicy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. I think we, uh, we can get into it. Um, if you can switch to the PPT, yes. please, for me, then uh, that would be great. So yes, the MAG Infinite S3. Um, so we've already done the X2. So don't confuse the two. The X2 is the larger brother. Uh, of this model. Uh, this is of the MAG uh, class or uh, segment, segment um, however you want to call it, but uh, we have uh, three segments as you know, M M A G, M P G, and M A G, M E G, M P G, M A G, sorry. Uh, M always stands for MSI obviously, and then uh, in this case it is Arsenal Gaming, <coughs> which is our uh, yeah mid-tier mid-tier uh, um, segment, actually. Uh, we don't really sell low-tier <laughs> at MSI. Um, we do, don't really do entry-level. Well, on some, some product groups we do, but uh, not on desktops. Uh, desktops are always mid. Depends, but like in certain configurations, QB can be quite entry level. Right, right, true. So for, yeah, for yeah, those yeah. kind of... Had some but also PCs, in the Pro Series, you have like all the way from entry level, like but, but for example, those are very nice if you want to run like a home server, or small HTPC, yeah. or maybe a home assistant server, something like yeah. that. But that's All our professional line, fast. so uh, yeah. those wouldn't be in the same segmentation branding-wise. So we separate gaming from pro, uh, and so there's no MAG Pro class or anything like that. So it's a little bit different than motherboards, I think, because motherboards have like one lineup and then there's pro and then on top of that is gaming. <laughs> it's kind of the same here, but uh, there's more overlap, I think, for desktops. <clears throat> um, and usually our pros are very small form factors. We've had some uh, 180 liter cases in the past, but I think they're going EOL soon. So uh, and often there are no dedicated graphics cards in there so that al already allows you to make the system a little bit smaller yeah yep. Alan is uh, asking is it cheaper than the prospect this PC no <laughs> no or were you talking about the case then yes <coughs> I don't know is there do you know the price of the separate case for this one for this one, no, yeah, no, this one won't sale. be sold separately. <laughs> it's priceless. But I think they're trying to get more information about what I just teased, and I'm not going to give them any more information than what I already said. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think I'm Shadow Bands. No, you're not. No. Um, and at this point, no plans to make a portable console. We have had uh, a desktop PC in the past where uh, that was very focused on streaming. So that came a little bit close if you compare it to the Xbox nowadays uh, with Game Pass and such. Uh, but yeah, it w like I said, it wasn't really focused on, on gaming. No, much. but I think um, what Prime is, is like the, the um, Steam Deck kind of thing, like the... Right, no, nothing like that. Like a no. Nintendo Switch, <laughs> but then one that, that is more like a PC. Yeah, no, I don't think we... Uh, <coughs> no, <coughs> we not at this point, we don't have those plans. Yet. Yeah, would be cool though. Have we not tried it in the past? No. Something like that? No. no eh? But maybe in the future, who knows? Who knows? We'll, uh, we'll pass the suggestion along to our HQ. How long does an all-in-one last? 
an all-in-one cooler or an all-in-one PC asteroid? Yeah, like an all-in-one liquid cooler. Should run for quite a while. Is there a reason why many of the MSI monitors have no official VESA HDR certificate? I have two monitors and I'd like to get a third uh, bit IPS panel, 120 to 144 hertz, and a higher hard HDR certificate is difficult combination to find. Uh, I think most of our monitors, if they reach the required spec for the certification, they should have it. But in some cases, the, the certificate does cost licensing. Uh, license or maybe in some cases, they might have, might have chosen not to uh, include I may it. have autumn <laughs> accidentally switched off your microphone before. I was coughing, <laughs> but I had the wrong button. So I'm oh. not sure if they heard <laughs> your complete story. Sorry right, about that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you got that. But uh, yeah, um, it's a licensed. Uh, licensed uh, certificate so in some cases we might not invest <coughs> in it i don't know uh, depending on if it's worth it or if it has focus for the product um, but yeah um, if you're looking on amazon i don't know if that's your uh, way of finding monitors i don't know where you're looking but on amazon not all the information is always complete um, so they might miss some information about hdr certifications and stuff on amazon specifically so please look on the website if you want to want to have like the true information. Uh, I think the the website is the best uh, reference for you. Right, all right. Um, yeah. So MAG um, to give you a, a visual a little bit on what this segment is. Um, you know the Aegis, the Trident. There's the Infinite X2 in the middle. Uh, then there's the uh, MPG Trident that's uh, coming soon as well, Trident 3, Trident uh, AS. Um, these will also have a refresh at some point. And then, uh, so those are the more portable ones? <coughs> yeah. And then there's the, the more affordable ones, which is the Codex series. And, and this, this, uh, this small boy, the MAG Infinite uh, S3. So uh, it's, it's in our gaming segment, it's the, uh, it's the lowest ball. Well, yeah, it's the lowest segments for desktop, but that doesn't by any chance, uh, by any means, mean that it's a uh, that's not a tough boy. Um, a little bit about the design. Uh, it started off with a sketch. <laughs> There's a very nice story to it, but uh, yeah, uh, I will show you a little bit later on the PC, actual on the, uh, actually on the camera, so you can see the design a little bit. But it's very simple, it's very sleek, and it has a nice front panel. Uh, there's two options. So there's a transparent side panel, and there's a, a, a closed one, so you, you can't see through it. Uh, I will show you that on camera later as well. So both come included? <coughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, powerful performance. Well, uh, you're our CPU guy, uh, Mr. Michiel. Uh, uh, we're running on the H, uh, H platform. So uh, yeah, please tell us uh, tell us all you know about so this. So 13 uh, generation Intel, it's Raptor Lake, um, the latest generation also from Intel. Um, and as of the, they st Intel started in the 12th generation with having kind of a big little kind of architecture. So they're using P cores and E cores. P is for performance, E is for efficiency. So you have performance cores and efficient cores. Um, and the 13700F uh, that is in this uh, system is uh, a system that has eight P cores and eight E cores, and the P cores also have hyper threading. So in total, you have 16 cores and 24 threads. Um, and also those P cores are, for example, utilized for gaming. They usually give you higher, uh, better single core performance. And those E cores, of course, come in handy if you're doing multi-threaded tasks. You just have a whole bunch of cores uh, to your disposal if you want to do like video rendering, all those kind of tasks. Um, so a very nice all-round processor in this PC. So an i7, it's not bad for a mid mid tier PC, right? No, i7 is uh, <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's quite good. Uh, yeah, combined with the uh, H610 uh, platform, anything special to n note about that? Mm -hmm. No, not specifically. It it can run it fine, but it's not like 
if you want to have like very extreme, a uh, very extreme feature set, of course you will need to go to a higher end system. So then you're looking towards your MPG or any MEG series. So this is just more focusing on the basics. It does what it has to do, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's what you usually can expect when you have a. a, a a pre-built desktop, right? It's yeah, it depends. Like the, the higher end models, we, for example, in our lineup, we also have like Z series chipset models, and they usually come with K series CPUs. So then, um, you they, of course get a little bit more of yeah. that of that unlocked performance. Yeah. Um, but here, it's a regular, um, not a K SKU CPU. So it also doesn't make sense to, for example, combine it with a Z series chipset because you don't get too much benefit um, of that. Of course, they're clocked slightly higher. Um, but yeah, in order to get that, you also need like very beefy cooling. Um, so that's what you will find in our higher end ones, where you, for example, get liquid cooling as your CPU cooler. Yeah, for example, the Trident X2. Uh, yeah. I think we've done a stream on that uh, a while back. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure we did because I did it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, we probably did it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, th those ha also had uh, a lot of software with the, like overclocking features and stuff, and it had a little uh, screen uh, on the, on the front. Yeah, you can expect a little bit of a beefy motherboard version uh, uh, in that desktop compared to this one. But uh, yeah, like I already said, Trident uh, <coughs> is is MAG, so that's our highest gaming segment. So the price will also reflect that, obviously. Um, and it's our most high-end desktop, so just more features, more stuff. Um, I think MAG is, is the Arsenal gaming lineup is uh, is focused more on you know. Uh, I wouldn't say nonsense, but no, no nonsense, no, uh, no. It's not like too the many basic. Features. You don't, you don't get like the very advanced features, yeah, like Thunderbolt or those top, kind of just, things. Yeah, just, just the basics yeah. and and exactly what you need to have like a nice running gaming PC, basically for as low cost as possible. Uh, Alan is yeah. asking, uh, are you likely to do any in AMD? Uh, <coughs> not specifically for this model, but for example, we do have Codex and Meta. They're basically the same system, but Codex is yeah. the Intel one. So here, you, in this overview, it's only 13 gen. So this is only Intel. That's why you only see Codex. But we, for example, have the Meta version of that one, and that one uh, is based on the AMD platform. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely also have uh, AMD pre-builds, pre but not specifically for the, the Infinite S3. Right. This, uh, this desktop is equipped with uh, DDR5 uh, memory, in this case, uh, dual DIMMs and uh, uh, 8 per DIMM, so 16 total. Uh, I think that's the configuration that we have for now in, in Europe. Uh, there should be some new configurations coming uh, in the future, so stay tuned for that. But also uh, depends a bit per region. Um, yes. Which configuration will be available? Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, we talk for for the entire world, so uh, it really depends on on what region you live in. Uh, we s sometimes we have specific SKUs for the US, for example, that are not sold in in the EU. EU. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to know that, please uh, contact your local reseller or uh, your local MS or MSI uh, sales employee if you want. Uh, if you can reach them. Marcus is asking in Twitch chat, stream title says Age of Wonders 4. Are you guys gaming today? Aha! Uh -huh. Very sharp-sighted, Marcus. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> we might. It depends on how much time you have, but I think uh, I think we have time for uh, some Age of Wonders 4. It's yes, a so game PC, so it makes sense to run a game on it, right? Yes. <laughs> we'll show it off. If you have suggestions, Marcus, I don't know if you know anything about the game, but if you have suggestions for uh, for a race that we need to make, then uh, feel free to uh, to post them here. Good evening, Jarwin. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so moving on, uh, yeah, basic <coughs> basic airflow, which you would expect on the on the front. Uh, no fans, no extra fans, no additional stuff. Just uh, the normal uh, openings, um, and uh, there's a fan on the top that uh, pushes airflow out, and there's obviously the, the fan in your uh, PSU that uh, blows your, fa uh, your airflow out of the case uh, from the bottom. But other than that, there's a lot of inlets, there's a lot of open space, so uh, should should be enough fresh air for, uh, for this specific build uh, to not overheat. Yeah, so it is tested with this configuration as yes. well. Of course, if you're going to upgrade to like a higher-end graphics card, it maybe produces more heat, there is already a high end graphics card in it is 4070, but still, if you're going higher <laughs> and it produces more heat, then you may want to add fans. And you also do it's have possible. several positions where you can add fans in this case. Yeah. But later on, Ralph will show you the inside, so we'll also show you where you could add fans um, yeah. if required. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
yeah, this is nothing new, but NVMe, uh, NVMe E6. So uh, yeah, a lot faster than uh, SATA. Uh, Gen 3 SSDs. Um, of course, it has RGB, the most important feature on this PC, which gives you the most FPS, the mostest. Um, but yeah, Mystic Light I is, uh, is available. I don't know if you see it. But I will show you with the cam later because we have green screens here and it, it here looks weird. Here you can weird. see it a bit in the front already. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a little bar here and then in the inside as well, which uh, I will show you all of that. The color looks present. a bit funky if it turns green. Of course, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, of yeah, yeah, because screen, of the green screen. screen. That's why I said it, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we have a camera set up for that, so uh, we will show you everything about the PC that we talk about now. We will show you later. Uh, don't Schnips worry. is asking, is the side panel uh, window plexi or tempered gloss? Uh, you have a choice. So it comes with uh, a closed, uh, closed uh, side panel and an open one. So you can switch them out if you yeah, want. Yeah, but the, the, the windowed version, is that plexi or is it tempered oh, gloss? Oh, like that. No, that's plexi in this yeah. case. Yeah. So the higher end models come with tempered gloss? Yes, for sure. And this one is plexi. Yeah. yeah. Anjo is asking, any dust filter? Uh, no. Actually, no. No, no dust filter. Not on the bottom either. No. Um, so yeah, wireless, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, compatible. Uh, so that also means uh, uh, Bluetooth, of course. Um, yeah, it, it's also nothing new, but it's the uh, it's the uh, um, 802.11 AX standard. So, uh, and because uh, of the E, it also supports the six gigahertz frequency. Yes, in yes, addition exactly. to two point four and five gigahertz. Yeah, so uh, very beefy Wi-Fi. What you would expect for a new desktop, you know. Um, See-through type panel, so it's an option. Like I said, I will show you that in a second. What's all? Uh, I'll show you everything that's in the box. Um, but yeah, you have an option to, to switch it out. And here you can see a little bit of, an, of the inside and what's inside, um, and, and that it's pretty easy to upgrade. Um, so yeah, you, you can really sh see that uh, you have an option to upgrade the VGA if you can find a, a, a dual fan. I think a triple fan would be ambitious. Would it fit? Yeah, I think you have some space. Yeah, it might fit. But you have to take out the, the brackets here. <laughs> but uh, I'll yeah, show you that uh, with close-ups in a sec. Depends a bit on the model, but I think certain models would fit. Yes. Um, of course, take into account also if you're going for a higher-end GPU that you still have enough power from your power supply. Because in certain situations, you may oh, yes. need to upgrade your power supply if you're going for a very high-end GPU. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, uh, there's some uh, uh, PCI Express slot on the motherboard as well, which is uh, Gen 3. Uh, or the, the SSD is Gen 3, the slot is actually Gen 4 compatible. Um, there's two times 2.5 uh, inch drive base and one time 3.5 inch. Uh, so if you want to push some uh, additional hard drives in there, you can. Uh, so that's, that's the upgradability for you. You can see that the top fan that's in there, uh, but you can still uh, install a fan in the back if you want. Uh, and even uh, push some fans on the front if you, uh, if you would like that uh, for some extra airflow. Uh, so there's there is some upgrade uh, opportunities, and maybe 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 we can even fit a small yeah a really small <laughs> with the definition of small being very important uh, uh, AIO cooler in there if you wanted to. Uh, so it's it's future proof I would say I mean uh, how much space do you have in the front for fans? Because if you can fit like two hundred twenty millimeter ones. You well, it depends. It. If you, you so you, if you if you put the AIO cooler in it, then uh, uh, you don't have much space for a bigger graphics card. Can you maybe turn it towards the detailed camera? Yes, then I we can, can do have that. a little bit of a look already. Whoop! Uh, carefully. Let me see. Yeah, it's uh, it looks a bit funny with the green screen, but yeah. Um, so here you see the roster. I think so in I this configuration, you would be able to fit a 240 in, right? Yeah, 240, I think, would be the biggest you could get. Anything bigger, yeah, is doubtful. <laughs> 
Uh, that would be very compact. But yeah, you like to build compact, right? So the, this is not compact that's at not all compact in my, enough for my you. book. <laughs> <laughs> for me, this is plenty of space for everything. But yeah, like like I said, you would have to install the if you want an AIO cooler in there, you would have to install fans here, so that would stick out like this much, and then the radiator. So then you don't have enough space anymore for an extra beefy GPU if you wanted to upgrade that. So yeah, if you're going for a three fan, definitely check if you if you yes. still have sufficient space left for for an AIO sure. because then it could be a little bit tighter. Yeah. All right. But uh, there is yeah. still some some extra space in the front of the case that is currently. Uh, Available free to use, yeah, available yeah. to use. Yeah, and it also depends if you're installing uh, extra SSDs here and stuff. Uh, actually, it, it, it st should still fit on top. Yeah, it should still. Be so uh, this this should come out as well. Shame says I do like the GPU support reel. It would make it easy to ship. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is what all our desktops have nowadays. Um, yeah, because otherwise there's just too much returns, too much RMA, because the video card, the graphic card will just bounce in the case. Uh, yeah, sometimes easy. shipping can be a little bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is very, uh, I can lift up the PC on this. Uh, yeah, this is very sturdy. Yeah, yeah. very sturdy. So, um, yeah, I like this as well. It's very nice. Even though the graphics card is not even that heavy in this case, because it's quite small, as you can see, it's, fr it's very compact. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, very nice. Uh, it does what it must do. I will show you that later. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, drive base we already discussed. Um, MSI App Player, also nothing new. We've already went through this on, uh, on all the <coughs> desktop streams. So I'm not going to bore you with it once again. If you want to know more about uh, the App Player, please uh, check out our previous streams. Uh, but yeah, basically, it's, uh, it's, it, uses, it has a partnership with, uh, with Blue, so if we have a partnership with BlueStacks. Uh, BlueStacks used to be the emulator for uh, uh, for basically phones and stuff uh, to get to, to, do, to do phone apps on your PC basically. Um, so you can do all sorts of games like Clash of Clans and, and stuff like that. You can you can play in your desktop as well uh, with this emulator. Um, and the app has grown and added some extra features and uh, yeah, it's it's become actually very nice to use. So uh, um, yeah, it comes included with that. Talking about ports, um, we'll show you more about that in a sec, but uh, these are the ports that are included. So on the top, uh, on the front panel, front I.O., you can see a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And then there's a Gen 1 Type-C connector, Gen 1 Type-A connector, uh, an LED for the uh, HDD and a power button. And that's the that's everything that's on the front. On the back here, you can see a HDMI out of for the motherboard, which uh, you're not going to use because you have a graphics card, uh, a, a D-sub connector even. Also, uh, in this configuration, it's a it's an F <coughs> SKU CPU. Yeah. So, so there's no integrated graphics in there. Yeah. That means that also those ports with the current CPU you cannot use. Of course, if you would swap it out for non-F series, you could use it. Yeah. But in this situation, we're also there is a dedicated graphics card in there, so there's not really it's a, not a point in using want. them. Yeah. <laughs> but, so use the ones uh, in the graphics card. In case you want to swap out your, uh, you know, you want to do a crazy build and you really want to have this case or you want to use it in the future and you want to just swap out your CPU, uh, it's there, you know, if you want to use it with uh, integrated graphics. Um, the D-Sub is, is usually for printers and stuff, so it, it could be convenient. The D-Sub? No, it's for monitors. Uh, uh, no, it's not, not, a, not a serial monitors. one. Uh, it's not a serial, a serial port. The DSOP is for, for old monitors, analog. Oh, I thought the DSOP was also for uh, for printers and stuff. No, that's the serial one. But that's that's an old connector. We don't have that on the motherboards anymore. Right, okay. Um, well, in that case, you could connect the monitor there as well, but yeah, only with integrated graphics. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, same story as the And HMI. probably nowadays, if you're a gamer, many of those are <laughs> running high refresh rate. And you're not going to get that on the, on a DSOP. So you will yeah. need preferably DisplayPort or HDMI. These are mostly here to uh, for configuration and easy configuration, RMA and stuff. Uh, you know, it w would be more convenient for us to test stuff. And uh, but also the the motherboards that we use in these kind of systems are based off models we also have separately. Uh, we also sell separately. Yeah. Um, so it's more expensive to take it off usually than yeah, usually yeah. So the connectors are on there. Indeed, we could take them off, but in case you want to run a non-F series CPU, yeah. um, then you can still do it if you want to. So if you ever want to 
reuse the motherboard for a different purpose, you still have the opportunity. But in this configuration, of course, just use the, the display outputs on the graphics card. Yeah, but if you really want to troubleshoot uh, and, and make it easy, then yeah, stick in a, stick in a CPU with the integrated graphics and use those ports, and then it's very easy to troubleshoot. Uh, it depends on how technical you are, I guess. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's there to use if you want. Uh, so anyway, uh, moving on to, there's also a display port on a connector on the motherboard, this port out, same story. Uh, then two times USB 2.0, type A, uh, there's a PS2 uh, combo port on it, uh, Gen 1 type A connector on the back as well, uh, two times 2.0 type A below that, and then the three audio jacks, uh, which is a microphone and a stereo. And gigabit lamp. And even surround, I think, right? The last one is surround, I think, right? Michiel, can you confirm that? Uh, you can run them in surround if you want. You will have three jacks, and then you will yeah. basically reconfigure the other plugs to be the other channels. Yeah. So off three connectors, you can run, it, and you <coughs> run a surround system. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a nice extra to have. Uh, and then, uh, of course, on the VGA, on the very bottom, three display ports and one HDMI, which is quite standard nowadays. Uh, I think all the 40 series have that set up, right? Yeah, correct. Um, on so our, yeah. our cards, yes. Yeah, so the HDMI there supports 4K and 100 to 120 hertz, and the display ports are uh, 1.4a. So it's also nice if you want to hook it up to like a modern... Um, 4K television, you can also do it. Silver panel on the back? No, it's not silver. Well, the inside is silver. <laughs> it's not like the panel, it's like the, the case itself. Like the panel, the, the case, like the, the frame is silver, but the panels, they are black. Yeah, so I can show you. If you go to the main cam, so this is the front. So this is the optional see-through. Uh, it looks weird because I still have the plastic on it which I'm not going to remove today, but uh, this looks, uh, this is also see-through with the roster for airflow. And then if you go to the back, you can see it's not painted there. So if you, if you would buy our, uh, our higher end PCs, this would all be painted as well and coded, but uh, in this case, it's not. And that's, that's just how we save some cost, you know, to, to make it more affordable. Uh, like we said, it, this is this PC is for for the people who just want to have like a simple gaming PC that does what it has to do, and uh, as, uh, with as low cost as possible. So we try to cost down everywhere we can, um, and we try to keep the nice features in there, basically. Yeah. Right. Moving on. Uh, so this is a little overview. So like uh, Michiel already mentioned, uh, uh, 13700 F <coughs> processor with HTX10. Then uh, this is a, has a 4070 graphics card, which is the dual fan Ventus model, um, two times HDR, HDR. It can support up to 64, so that's also a little bit of upgradability for you. Uh, you can upgrade it to 64 gigabyte, gigabytes, uh, but in this case it's uh, it's uh, 16 and two times eight. Um, yeah, the storage we already talked about, so the driving base, two and a half inch, three and a half inch, and uh, uh, Gen 4 uh, port with a Gen 3 SSD currently in it. Um, and then there's the Wi-Fi 6E antenna, which is uh, with an Intel chipset, Intel uh, 290V, uh, and AX210, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the 219 is the wired yeah, so controller. Yeah, the, the, sorry, the, 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 the 219 is the, the wired <laughs> version and the, the wireless version is the AX210 yeah, with Bluetooth. <coughs> sorry. Uh, and 500 watt power supply. Uh, in this case, we have an engineering sample. So you'll see later on that uh, this is a 750 watt. Um, but yeah, they should be shipped with 500. Ghost M is saying, please stop making this F processor standard in these pre-builds. Some customers actually want to do encode, decode work that benefits from the iGPU in addition to the GPU. That is a very specific use case and using the regular screw with HQ with integrated graphics on the non-F1 would automatically make the system more expensive, whereas the vast majority of users uh, would never use the integrated graphics. So that's a bit of the trade-off. Um, 
yes, we could of course make them with a non-F series, but it will make the system more expensive. And considering this is a very specific use case that not many people actually use. Um, but it's, yeah, I, yeah, I get what you mean. Indeed, if you have like a, a non-F, you, you can do encoding and decoding on the on the iGPU and the CPU. Um, but that's always the, the kind of the choice we have to make. But maybe there were, we will also have a SKU with non-F series in the in the future for this one. It depends a bit per pre-build that we have. We also have pre-builds that do have an iGPU. I think a lot of that uh, also depends on stock and availability and stuff of the chips, right? Um, yeah, as well, but also on the region. This can differ per region. Um, so right now, um, this is the configuration that we have, but maybe in the future we'll have different configurations, maybe also i5, maybe uh, with integrated graphics. Um, so it, it, it really depends on the, the specific model and also for, for other desktops. That could be different and there could be an iGPU in there as well. Right. Welcome, I think it's guys. time for our first giveaway, Michiel. I think this is a good Ooh, moment that, for that's that. That's a good idea. Because we Maybe are you can repeat how people can participate. If yes. They done so, yet. so uh, if you can switch to the main cam for us, yes, I can. then I can show people. So right behind me is a, li is a link where you can go to. And there you should be able to find, uh, find our giveaway. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I had a cold. Um, so uh, there you should be able to get, uh, find our giveaway. It is also spanned by our stream elements uh, bot in the, in the YouTube chat and the Twitch chat. Um, and uh, yeah, you can participate throughout the stream. We'll be giving away multiple ones. So it, this is not the only giveaway we're doing. Uh, and in this case, it's, uh, it's Steam Keys. So uh, very nice to have. So Ralph, I have our first winner. The first winner is Human Train. Congratulations. Congratulations. Does Steam that mean you're a big today? dude? Or very long. Or very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you look at it. Long but or Human tall. Train, congrats. <laughs> well, congratulations, sir. Sir or madam. Um, yeah. Good job. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Um, I think we're going to show you the inside of the PC now. Uh, I have a little something to... Uh, to talk about after that as well, but uh, first let's let's just have a look at uh, all the stuff that's uh, that's in the box. Uh, if you can switch to the uh, mobile cam, Whoopa. So uh, the box also comes with uh, this little guy. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the big box because it's it's just a. Uh, a big cardboard box but it's more important what's inside so you can see here you have like separate antennas uh, to connect in the back um, some SATA cables in case you want to upgrade so uh, that's all provided for a power cable uh, I put these in there because we, t we had to take them out to uh, to connect it but uh, every port here is, uh, is protected as well and then obvi obviously there's uh, an instruction manual on how to set it up uh, with MSI Center as well and have the best graphics performance and then uh, there's a quick start guide and uh, um, uh, regulatory notices for uh, the European Union in this case uh, but yeah the quick start guide for the uh, installing the antennas as well in case you were uh, in doubt on how to do it um, so that's uh, that's pretty much what's in the box together with uh, two side panels like I mentioned so um, one of the side panels is, is the one I've already shown you. Wait, let me get rid of that little box for you. Hold on. <coughs> this is hard to do with one hand. Here, you can, you can put it down. I use ah. the other cam, so then okay. you can hold them in front of the case as well. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> right, yeah, much better. Thank you, Michiel. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, oh. It's this one. That you've, I, you've already shown you this, but uh, yeah, like we mentioned, the inside is not coded. Uh, but you can see the, the inlet for air here and the plexiglass, uh, which is just a nice extra to have. And that would look accordingly, so you can still see your RGB fan through it. So yeah, it's very, very nice additional extra. And of course, you have the normal version, which is also in the case, which is Oh, I'll take it out, but which is just closed. So if you like, uh, if you like to have it closed, you can. So it's not completely closed. We still do have some ventilation holes, of course, that has to do with the airflow in the case, yeah. so it can get pressure. Yeah, ventilation will always be there, of yes. course. 
uh, yeah, that seems obvious, but uh, thank you for mentioning that, <laughs> Michiel. All right, uh, then moving on from that, let's uh, let's turn the PC a little bit and show you the side. So this is the front view. If you can switch back to the uh, yes. to the manual cam. Um, so this is the, the side view, as you can see the fan on the top, the H610 motherboard here. Uh, yeah, one thing you notice is the, the stock, uh, or it's not stock actually, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a branded fan, but uh, I'm not sure what brand it is in this case. It could be Cooler Master, it could be MSI, it could be a collaboration, uh, but it's, uh, it's an RGB fan nonetheless, uh, and it's an air-cooled fan. Uh, so that's what, what it comes with stock. Uh, the 40 series graphics card, as you can see, it's 47 Ventus times 2, 12 gigabytes. And like I mentioned before, in this case, it's a 80 plus gold power supply, but there's, so we have an engineering sample, so this is 750 watts. Uh, normally, you would get a bronze uh, with, uh, with 500 watts. Uh, but that's more than sufficient to, uh, to run this setup. Uh, some extra cables already included, uh, bound together uh, with the tie wrap uh, for upgradability. So that's already uh, put in the power supply as well. And then here you can see the three and a half inch, I don't know if you can see it properly, three and a half inch deck uh, to upgrade your HDD. And then here you see the, the separate slots for a couple of SSDs. And then here already pre-drilled dri uh, pre holes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the uh, yeah uh, for the upgradability so you can put fans there or or something if you want more RGB in there you can also just put that in there uh, very nice or the, the radiator of course or the radiator <coughs> yeah um, so this is uh, adjustable as well so you can uh, uh, adjust this to uh, towards a, a new graphics cards if you need be so if you have a longer one if you have a three slots then you can for example move it further to the right yeah. and like you, yeah, as you can see I can pull it but it's it's really sturdy uh, it doesn't go anywhere and here you can also adjust it so uh, there's some upgradability options there yeah and uh, that's it guys I mean that's uh, the it's it's a nice PC but uh, it's very basic as you, as you can see compared to our Trident uh, but yeah um, like we mentioned it's uh, it's it's the what exactly what you need in a gaming PC nothing too fancy just uh, just practical practical so you can switch back, Michiel. Thank you, sir. Um, oh yeah, the, sorry. The uh, I forgot, almost forgot the back sides. So uh, yeah, there's still some protection in it, as you can see. So these you can <laughs> you can keep in unless you start uh, troubleshooting. Uh, but yeah, I would also suggest to keep them in so you don't yeah. accidentally plug in your, <laughs> your <coughs> display the, the cables most, in the wrong. The port. most common mistake we have. I think when troubleshooting with friends that buy a new PC is people connecting the HDMI or display port and the motherboard instead of the VGA. And then they, they are asking us, oh, why, don't, why am I getting no images? <laughs> why is my screen not working? Well, sir, you are using the wrong port. Yeah, it's VGA, Mr. Masterdux. It's a D sub. Yeah. And a power supply in the back uh, with the antenna connectors here as well. So the antennas would stick out uh, to the side, top, bottom, whatever you, uh, wherever you want, and there's even a way to maybe side mount uh, VGA. <laughs> or is this not? No, I don't think so. I think it's the bracket. Oh, it's oh no, yeah. actually it's a protection bracket to uh, close it up properly, and it's an actual extra layer to uh, close off the screws. Yeah, you're right, Michiel. Um, so yeah, very practical, very nice. This side is closed, as you can see. Oh, sorry, a lot of green screen that I'm showing you, but uh, we are in a studio, obviously. Uh, so yeah, you can switch back. Kay. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like this. I would buy this over a high end, I think. Depends a bit on what you want and what kind of features. You yeah. Need. Well, I like the high end, but I've, I probably wouldn't be able to afford it because I'm not just not the target audience. <laughs> Yeah, like if, you're, if you're not going to use the features of a high end, then there is no point in investing more money in it. Yeah, it's a bit like that with with separate components as well. Of, of course, you you can get the highest end motherboard, but if you're not going to use the feature set of that motherboard, yeah. then you may as well go for a mid-range model instead. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, 
I, I am one of those guys who puts the puts his PC together and then puts it somewhere out of sight and never touches it again unless it stops working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I don't need all the extra extra stuff. It's just uh, it's good enough for me. Um, but yeah, uh, opinions uh, differ from mine, obviously. So if you do like that stuff, then uh, then we have some options for you. <laughs> right. Um, moving on. Oh, Andr Andres is asking for oh, the, the yeah. show the secrets behind the studio. Do you do you want to see a very cruel secret in this studio? This is the key of our studio, <laughs> and there is actually just the head of Lucky attached to it. So this is the real secret of our studio. Yes, very uh, <laughs> narcissistic. There, there and used to be here. a body as well, but now there is not anymore, unfortunately. There used to be a body. <laughs> Why, why, why was that, Michiel? Why did we have a complete lucky as a studio key? Our video editor accidentally took the key home a couple of times in his pocket, so <laughs> we needed to have like a <laughs> something big attached to the key so he couldn't accidentally put it in his pocket anymore and forget about it. And that worked. Ever since, he didn't <laughs> accidentally take the key home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then... From a full body, it became just a head. Just Very a nice. bit of behind the scenes here at MSI. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, um, we have a nice campaign that we wanted to highlight to you as well running currently, uh, which is Streamer Hub campaign. Um, let me switch to the desktop view. There you go. It's ready for you, Michiel. Um, so Streamer Hub campaign, there's a landing page for it. Uh, this is basically... Uh, um, a landing page that gives you all the information for if you're an aspiring streamer. So anything from hardware to software to you know anything you would want to know. Uh, and this is made in collaboration with uh, some experts in the field. So not just uh, it's not just MSI saying like hey buy this, but it's also an expert in the field telling you a little bit about streaming. Um, that expert is LJM who is a, a Twitch partner with a background in video production. Uh, feel free to read the blog post about it. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's actually very, uh, very, very well, well written, I think. Uh, there is some blog posts on how, how to get started. So if you're looking to get into streaming, you can. Uh, it's just a guide on, uh, on what kind of hardware you w would want to use for what purposes. Uh, and how to level up your stream if you're already streaming uh, and, and you, you're thinking about upgrading, what to do first, uh, how to monetize it, you know, mental health, uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's a very nice, uh, very nice blog. Um, there's also uh, a little bit about software. So we have some partnership with, with uh, uh, VoiceMod, uh, in this case Metal TV and uh, Stream Scheme. And uh, those are platforms you might want to consider when you're streaming uh, to use. Voice mod is actually very nice. We tested this, uh, Michiel, right? It was yeah. with you, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> we tested it with. Uh, Can uh, have like a president. I, I was, the, I was Obama, officer. I think, right? Or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> we, we tried a couple of them. It's, yeah, it's pretty funny as well. To, yeah, to it's quite funny. Out, it's yeah. uh, it's getting better and better, especially with AI coming out now as well. I think they, they also have like a trial version, so make sure to check yes. it out if you're curious. Yeah, VoiceMod has a trial version. Also works quite fine with a headset. Of course, it will sound <coughs> better if you have a microphone, but still, already with a headset, you can do quite a lot with it. Yes. Yeah, it's very nice. Welcome, Dutch guy. Uh, so yeah, you can stay in touch and, uh, and register here to stay in touch, but uh, uh, also, most importantly, and uh, something you all would probably like, uh, is uh, there's a giveaway on this page as well, which is uh, the MSI Streamer Hub campaign, and uh, you have to do some, fill out some forms, uh, do some actions, it's like a little bit of Q&A action for, uh, to check if you actually read the blog post or not, and then... Uh, so make sure to do your homework. Huh? Yeah, make sure to do your homework <laughs> first. And then there's uh, there's some prizes, so uh, you can win uh, 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 Tomahawk Wi-Fi uh, B760 uh, with a core liquid, and then uh, Kingston uh, Kingston memory RAM, and then a 4070 Ti in, in one package together with the uh, 850G uh, power supply. So uh, that's a very nice package. That's the first prize for a lucky winner. And there's also some uh, sus subscriptions to Epidemic Sound, which is um, royalty-free music, which is something you would want to consider using if you're a streamer, uh, because otherwise you have to delete all your videos that you've streamed, uh, for example, because you're not, not, not you're using licensed music, um, and you you know haven't have the chance to get banned or, or stuff like that. 
Um, and also depending on what platform you stream on, Twitch is kind of uh, flexible on that. Uh, as long as you delete the video, you won't get flagged too much. But YouTube is relentless when it comes to streaming uh, uh, audio. So you really need a license for copyright free music. Uh, and if you have a subscription for that, you can uh, use that stuff. So it's actually very nice for streamers to have. Um, so yeah, um, feel free to stay in touch about this and, uh, uh, and register. And uh, yeah, never hurts to uh, participate in a giveaway, right? <laughs> Some question in chat, why H10 not a B-series <coughs> motherboard? Um, the thing is, we're, like the memory speed we're using here is still supported by the H <coughs> series as well. Uh, B series, of course, uh, of course, adds support for overclocking. So if you would have like higher memory modules um, or with a higher XMP profile, then you would need a B series. Um, that's not the case here. So it, from that sense, there is not really benefit in having a B series. And H610 is, is the more affordable option there. And if it doesn't make a difference in terms of performance, then that would be the logical way to go. Of course, in some other configurations, usually the higher end configurations, there you could find a B series or even Z series chipset. All depends on, on which exact model you have. But here a B series will not give you any performance difference over an H series. All right. Is there any remaining questions about this specific model uh, of PCs? Feel free. Um, the price point currently, uh, including 21% VAT, so you can calculate that back, is... Uh, Yes, 2,299 uh, euros, so 2,299, uh, that's including VAT 21%. So uh, uh, depending on your region, prices may differ. Um, but yeah, that, that's what the, this configuration goes for. That's, so that's a uh, 4070 with uh, 16 gigabytes RAM, um, a 500 watts power supply, and uh, yeah, this beautiful case. Am I missing something? Oh yeah, the i7 CPU, obviously. So the uh, 13700 uh, F SKU. Um, so yeah, very nice package, especially when you don't want to bother building it yourself. It's uh, it's ready to go, so uh, very nice. Uh, I think we can do another giveaway, right? Sounds good. Yeah. So um, if you didn't know yet, or if you just arrived, uh, we're doing a giveaway throughout the stream, uh, which is uh, for Steam keys. You can follow this link here, or you can find the link in the chat uh, posted by our Stream Elements bot uh, in YouTube and uh, our Twitch channel. Uh, unfortunately, if you're watching on the other channels, uh, you won't be able to find it. It's also in the description for the YouTube video. Um, so you can find it there as well. And you can still participate even after this giveaway uh, until the end of the stream. So uh, we'll, we'll even be doing a last one before we end the stream. So uh, yeah, uh, the yeah, new winner. Next winner. Oh, that's a very short name. Is it TJ? Yes, TJ, congratulations. You congratulations. also won a Steam Wallet code. So to all winners, keep an eye out on your mailbox, then we will uh, email it to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem it. Yes, yes, yes. She free MSI stuff. Boggers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Yeah, um, feel free to keep that, those questions coming. Um, I think we are ready to play some uh, some Age of Wonders 4. Um, if you have any suggestions for a specific race that you want us to uh, to make, feel free. I logged into my own account, so I've already played a bit. Uh, but I think it's not, it's the most fun to uh, to show you because we have limited time, obviously. Um, I think we have another like half hour or so. Um, so um, yeah, we can uh, we can play a, a little bit of the game. But we can make a ridiculous race, which is always uh, always funny to do. Um, so I will start. A, uh, do you uh, already have more Age of Wonders experience? A I'm mostly bit, yeah, familiar like I with said, Age of Empires, but not really Age of Wonders. No, Age of uh, this is the first <laughs> Age of Wonders I've actually played, okay. which is uh, which is funny. I've never really gone into turn-based strategy games, but uh, this is a turn-based strategy game. Uh, I, I've been told it's one of the better ones so far, so uh, that's why I, uh, I picked it up and tried it. Uh, I think Age of Wonders has some uh, some other versions. Uh, Planetfall, I think they had, uh, is the last one. Uh, that was more sci-fi based, uh, with sci-fi meaning um, yeah, futuristic and uh, 
yeah, with lasers and stuff, you know, like uh, <laughs> not not this, not magic, and not go no goblins and, uh, and and elves and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, Mr. Masterdog uh, says no civilization, really, wrong. No, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I mean, back in the day, I used to be more of an esports guy, like competitive gamer. So I used <laughs> to like Counter Strike and League of Legends and all that stuff, and I wasn't really into turn-based. And the older I get, the more I am. Um, looking to relax during gameplay so turn-based strategy is is just relaxing you know it's like playing a board game it's like uh, um, yeah I don't know it's just it's just chill you know There's I no tried pressure. civilization but for me the turn based I'm not patient <laughs> enough for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you're also a quake guy so yeah you know you're you're but like, like if I want to relax I for example uh, play anno 1800 but there you can continuously yeah. play and you don't have to wait until it's your turn yeah well you don't have to wait until it's your turn here but it's more um, well it, unless you play multiplayer uh, there's some I there's always multi play multiplayer <laughs> yeah so these, these games are not really famous for their multiplayer <coughs> um, there is a multiplayer in here which uh, apparently works all right uh, but then you have to wait for the other players to finish their turn uh, every time. So I would recommend uh, having a party on Discord or something to play that. Uh, because it's, you know, um, yeah, you, you can tell each other to hurry, up, <laughs> hurry your ass up uh, because you're waiting. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, there's actually a lot to think of when you play this game, especially the, the further along you get into the, into the round or the, the game, actual game you're playing. Uh, the more you can think about, um, it's uh, there's a possibility to do your own battles to play them out as as a as a real time. Uh, well, it's still turn based, but you can actually see the 3D renders and you can choose the abilities that your uh, your characters uh, will use. Uh, you can also just auto resolve it, and uh, uh, that's what I usually do. I just play the tactical part. Uh, unless you're playing like a very hard computer, uh, you can just. Uh, you want to jump in yourself because then the battle is more, you know, uh, more professional and and you can do it a lot better. You can lose less health on your units in the beginning, which is uh, in some uh, if you play on with a brutal enemy, it's essential. So for multiplayer, I would recommend it if you're playing someone else. Um, but if you're playing together against AI and stuff, and the, I mean the AI, the AI is actually pretty good. Um, I found that the AI, the friendly AI, doesn't really do much. Um, in terms of like attacking the enemy and stuff, uh, but you can take over cities and vassalize cities and stuff, and uh, they will defend themselves if if you uh, if you go to war with them, for sure. Uh, so they will move units and stuff, but uh, it's just when once you're once you have an alliance with them, they don't really they're not following your armies or anything like that, but uh, they just occasionally attack. Dragos is saying the quality of the stream on YouTube is way worse than here, and here is Twitch in this situation. It's quite interesting, did you force 1080p60? Because we're actually <coughs> pushing the exact same bitrate to both YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. So from our side, there is no difference in what we're pushing, <coughs> pushing towards each platform. We're also, it's, we're using the Restream for that, so we're also using the same encoder. So everything on that is basically identical. Um, Maybe it could be something on YouTube's end that they're doing something compressed or something, I'm not sure. But from our side, there shouldn't be a difference. Twitch is just better, says Mr. Mastodox. You always watch on Twitch, I can tell. Hmm. Anyway, let's start a new game. Choose <coughs> your destination. Um, so what's interesting, uh, a little bit of background, as far as I'm, I'm aware, I don't know the exact details, but uh, there uh, is like an arcane world with different uh, realities or different <coughs> dimensions um, which uh, or different realms I should say uh, and every realm has like a different sp uh, different species in them and uh, uh, people can move across well realms with these portals and there's one evil uh, wizard or a group of wizards like a faction that is uh, trying to just like destroy everything and you have to st kind of stop them. And they're a lot stronger than, uh, than the normal peasants. They're kind of like gods. Um, so uh, you have to band together with all the other species that are from all these different realms. Uh, and you have to band together to defend yourself, basically, uh, against the evil uh, wish stuff. Um, so um, the cool thing about all these realms is that it, it's quite it gets quite creative with, uh, with gameplay. So for example, this is a beginner realm. And every realm has like a, 
uh, yeah, like uh, 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 modifiers, I should say. Um, so in this case, it has harmonious lands. So this uh, there's ancient wonders spawning all over the map. So this this one has higher tiers of ancient wonders and infestation spawners, which is um, just uh, natural enemies on the map uh, that you can beat for experience and, and some items. Um, so this is. Uh, this one has uh, an absence of those, sorry, uh, of high tiers. So the official one are basically presets and custom you can yeah. create your own. So you can you can do the presets, which get up to like even a like a frozen realm that has a lot of more fires, as you can see. And then there's like one evil ice queen that you need to defeat, which uh, is obviously she's in her element, so in her. Uh, uh, in, on the Iceland, so she has a lot of like positive modifiers because of that, so she's a lot stronger. Uh, there's a lot of Frostling influence in there. Uh, our blizzards, you know, uh, occasional blizzards that uh, debuff your units and, and uh, your empire and stuff like that, and debuff your movement. <coughs> and here you can see the Frost Queen, Artica, has a large throne city and she starts with two additional cities, which is, you know, pretty overpowered if uh, as a start. Beantown is um, asking, no Ice King? No Ice King, no. No, it doesn't look like it. But you can create one in custom, right? We can, yeah. <coughs> you can also create a custom realm. I've actually never done that before, so I should probably Let's do try it. That. Welcome, KJE. Um, good day, good day. So you can choose an amount of players that is on the map. Um, yeah, we can go crazy and go with nine, but I'll, ju I'll just pick the average, which is five. Difficulty, let's let's say brutal. <laughs> let's see how we do. Um, <laughs> everyone plays their turn at the same time. Yeah, so it's more in rounds than in turns. Yeah, then it's rounds. Yeah, everybody <coughs> does their rounds at the same time, or you can use classic turns. Everybody plays their turn in the order of the rules list. Ah, so that's where that's more where for multiplayer, I think that you really take turns doing your uh, yeah. Then it's really turn based, or you can do everything simultaneously, and then when everybody ends turn, then we move on to the next round, basically. Uh, so simultaneously is fine. Uh, advanced settings. So here you can pick some modifiers. So this one has uh, large land masses separated by oceans. Can I just click those? Oh, I can choose a different one. Barren oceans, so... Uh, okay, let's not spend too much time and just pick something that we seem to like. I've never done lava before, I think that's pretty interesting. Scar divide. Uh, lava lakes, why not? Sounds intense. <coughs> Sounds very intense, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I don't know. So lava <laughs> and then you can have it frozen. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Let's do something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so lava lands with frozen. Frozen, frozen right? is harsh and cold. Frozen plains take the place of lush grasslands. Okay. Uh, magical origins. Why not? Is that a unicorn? That's a unicorn. Cool. Yes, sir. There is, is unicorns in this game. You can even ride them. You can ride a unicorn. Yes, and they poop out no. rainbows. While you oh, more it. RGB, so you get more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insolent. Insolent. Um, so yeah, there's uh, like I said, there's some specific uh, modifiers for your enemies basically in this map. Um, so this realm is home to poof, two powerful city. Each empire is uh, in itself led by artists and kings. Um, so then you have two basically oppos uh, opposing factions. This is the Frost Queen thing that you can also do, and then the Pretender Kings. There's th then uh, in this case there's three kings on the map. Uh, that all have like a, a claim to the throne and uh, apparently the, the king died or something and then they all have a, a claim to the throne and then they're all at war with each other and then you just have to pick one faction to co-op with and you know uh, defeat the other two basically uh, so I'll leave this at none because that's more interesting to me uh, what else is there the we walk blizzards crystal and abundance mana crystals domain of mayhem All combat is affected by Domain of Mayhem. What is that? Every three turns, all units have a base 30% of being afflicted with Preserve. Okay. Sounds complicated. Massive large caverns. Warping wilds. Uh, oh, that's quite cool. Well, let's do warping wilds. So they have uh, each strategic turn 
uh, surfaces, provinces have a small chance of transform transforming their features into new ones. Actually, that's really that makes it really difficult because then you build a farm on some farmland and then it changes into quarry. <laughs> so let's not do that. Uh, hmm. Unlimited power. What does the underground start mean? You also had like yeah, small so underground, large underground. Yeah, every map has an underground, which yeah. is a cave system kind of. Okay. <coughs> where factions can also start. Um, and uh, you can you can be a mole people if you want, uh, stuff like that. Um, but I'll, I'll show you that in a sec uh, once we start the game. I think that's enough modifiers for now. Let's just Don't confirm and make a... Make a race. So let, let's make something ridiculous. Um, oh, there is a feline one. Oh, you, you like the cats? Of course. Okay, let's make some ridiculous cats. Uh, so there's some traits here. So the the appearance and the race doesn't really make a difference, I think. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, they have some logical modifiers, so you can make this very like. You can make this make a lot of sense, but you can also make it ridiculous. So you can make like really. I see Pandorian Gray and Twitch Chat also wanted the. Uh, the cats. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, fair <laughs> enough. <coughs> I have a cat at, ha at my house as well too, so that's fine. Um, so you can make them strong, like uh, increase the physical damage, you can make them tough with extra defense, uh, which doesn't really make sense for cats. More resistance, more status resistances, quick reflexes, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Or do, we do they also make have something? nine lives? Uh, no, they can't. They don't have nine lives, but well, it, you could interpret it that way. You can say like, hey, they're tough because they have nine lives, you know, so you can say they're tough and then they have an adaptation or they're cold blooded. No, not cold blooded. So are they magic focused? Maybe are they growing an experience very fast? Elusive. I think they're very elusive cats, right? So that makes sense to me. Okay, let's, let's not. <laughs> Skeet says anything. every time I see videos on this game, I never get to see actual gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to some gameplay. Uh, feudal, high, which is uh, more like a faith kind of uh, I still society see the user uh, interface, Keats. <laughs> that is usually good and, and relying on faith. This is more like human, like really adaptive and good force, uh, good unifiers, and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, feudal is, is what it says. Uh, barbarian, which speaks for itself. Which but like is Age of Empires, there you also have the feudal age. <coughs> yeah, for example, yeah. <laughs> uh, so th this has like an affinity, which uh, gives you certain perks. Uh, industrious, so that's usually dwarves and stuff are very industrious. They can make a lot of armor and stuff and, and have upgrades that way. You can choose dark and mythic, which is magical focused. Uh, any preferences, Michiel? Ooh. Do you want some uh, some uh, dark cats or no, do you want, I want barbarian be... cats? You want barbarian cats? Yeah. Okay, barbarian cats. Awesome. Uh, let's go for that. Uh, and then you can choose some modifiers here as well. Uh, so you can say uh, they are uh, ritual cannibals, so they eat their own. Uh, they eat the dead, for example. And That's kind of uh, kind of what cats do, right? <laughs> is it? I don't know. They eat their own dead? Oh, their own? Yeah. Oh, cannibals. Oh, yeah. I didn't read properly. No. But this also makes them evil. That. Not evil, that I know of. Evilly aligned. Uh, so let's make some cats that uh, are, uh, let's see. Let's go for the good side this time, right? Devotees of good, imperialists. Uh, well, cats are chosen uniters, right? They unite people. That's true. You know, you you are in United with Chad, so we should go for Chosen Uniters. And then, uh, let's see, uh, Swarmers, that doesn't really fit cats. Mana Addicts. Uh, Fabled Hunters. Well, oh, cats yeah. are hunters for sure. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> this one, uh, gain resources from clearing infestation, ancient wandering resource node, range units and skirmishes units have a plus one rank. Okay. Hey Skeet, we're still looking at, looking at the user <coughs> interface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, don't we get to modify the, uh, what they look like what as well? Is what is their Isn't that the barbarian thing? No, no, no. Oh, maybe, the, maybe it's the next one. Um, so here we can choose like a tome. Um, 
So let's uh, let's choose something that can get us some units really fast. Also, I know this stone is really good to start with, uh, and it fits with our uh, spiritual, uh, our our faithful, good good aligned cats. Do you want a wizard king or a champion as a king? Champion. A champion. Yes. Okay. Let's go for a champion. And now we get to decide what they look like. So let's make them look ridiculous. Uh, oh, the right one is a This is the king only, so is it like a female cat or a male cat? No, make it a female. A female? Yeah. What kind of physique do you want? Do you want them fat? No, or do you want tiny cat. Tiny cat? Okay. Tiny cat. Well, this is not, this is not the, the size, because we can make them extremely tall. No, or tiny cat. We can cat. also make a very tiny cat. Skin color. Let's do you have a black and white one? My cats are black and white. So. Oh, this is kind of black and white. Yeah, works. What is the pose? Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. This with one? The, yeah, with the arms yeah. behind her back. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> any skin decoration that looks ridiculous? Uh, we have to keep it black and white for Michiel. Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> Blood in the neck. <laughs> That's brutal. Okay, let's let's have them uh, have some uh, scratches on their face because uh, they've been to war. So they're the tiniest cats. Uh, you can also make it like tiny and fat, which is also funny. No. No, tiny and skinny. All right. Tiny and skinny. And then it needs uh, to be the a fast and have. flexible cat. What kind of head do you want? This is the cute one. This yeah. is the angry one. Yeah, definitely the cute one. The cute one. Yeah. This one. Yes. Any eye color preference? Oh my god. <laughs> Oof. Like blue or green is nice. Blue? Yeah, blue is, the, is nice. This kind of blue? Yeah, fine. Hairstyle. Do you, <laughs> do you want it to be a hipster cat or. Uh... <laughs> what are they? Ooh. Oh, it's a lion. <laughs> Damn. Fee lion. But it's a. <laughs> a mohawk. <laughs> Wait, did we check. Oh, did we check. Male or female? You wanted a female cat, right? Yeah, female cat. Okay, female cat, yeah. I have um, two female cats. <laughs> then hairstyle, you want some dreadlocks? No. No? I just want like the regular kitty look. No bomb funk? No. Like this, like this? Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hair color? Oh, that's... Well, there's no, no hair, hair, so... <laughs> Never mind. Um, so, faction color, so you said black and white, right? Yes. Black and white, that also relates to armor, I think. Yeah, look, we can change this color as well. You want it black and white? Uh, no, we can make that like the armor, we can make like a nice color. I don't see that. the Let's secondary color is more for the logo, I think. I said logo. Yes. What kind of color armor can we pick from? Um, blue, green. Oh, that, that's the armor one. Blue, red. I like the yellow one. The yellow? Yeah. This? Perfect. <clears throat> with, with with black? Yellow and black? Yeah. It's quite good quite a good combo. Um, <clears throat> we can also change the physique of the other guys. So also tiny cats. All as tiny as possible. With really long arms and really short legs. <laughs> there you go. And you want it white and black, right? Like yeah, this. your nerd says, uh, this customization reminds me of Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. What mount type? What do you want a cat to sit on? Whoa. Cat what are horse? options? A horse? A big or, horse? Or a pony. <laughs> or a pony. <laughs> pony or a horse? Or some kind of warg? A, a wolf? wolf? A pig? That's a very majestic horse. I like the pig one here. Yeah, the one. pig? Yeah. This one? Yeah, I like this one. Let's do that. Yeah, this is just your ruler and this is your actual race. <clears throat> so can we give her, yeah, long arms as well. There you go. So it fits with the, <laughs> so really short legs. So she can scratch from a distance more easily. <laughs> Look at the arms again. <laughs> so long. Okay, let's continue. Uh, what is the first name of your ruler, Michiel? What's your cat's name? Pickles. Pickles? Yeah. And the other cat is called Peaches. And the last name? Pickles. Peaches? Yeah. And the race <laughs> What is the race name? 
<laughs> Mine come from a farm, they're not a race. <laughs> black farm. and white, what do we have for black and white? <laughs> no, just farm cats, it's a race. <laughs> farm cats, yeah. Farm cats race. <laughs> Onwards. Uh, Emperor, War Queen, Emperor, oh wait, this is just, okay. Pickles, Peaches, Farm Cats. <laughs> Ellen says, so we know the name of your cats, yeah. Definitely. <coughs> My cats don't have any privacy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Privacy, privacy generally goes out out the window. <laughs> I forgot to plug in a headset, so I have no sound, but uh, so I hope it's good. So, yeah, barbarian cats, which are chosen uniters uh, nice. and fabled hunters. Sure They're are. tough and elusive, <laughs> and they start with a tome of zeal, which is uh, a very faithful. Uh, uh, we can spawn a zealot instantly, or um, turn. For three turns, target-friendly units that gain Berserk or Strengthened. Alright, so this is our capital. Uh, this is our land right now. Who can you zoom in? Yes, you, yeah, this is the, the furthest you can zoom in. That's pretty cool. So this is going to be our city. <coughs> uh, we have some scouts, which is the good, the, they're riding pigs at the moment. So I can set them to, uh, to explore, auto-explore. I usually do auto explore, but you can also just manually like move them here or something. If they move over roads, they move faster. Oh, here you can also see free money. Pa -pa. That's uh, very nice. Free money is always good. But I usually let them auto explore because uh, they pick up the free stuff anyways. And then here's your. Uh, so the bluish part is what we still need to explore before you can go there. Um, what do you mean bluish part? No, this is ice. Okay, because at a certain point it says that it still needs yeah, to be Yeah, so this is a fog of ah, war, okay, the fo so you fog haven't fog explored yeah, that yeah. yet. And then this is what you've explored, but there's also like a secondary fog of war, which, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't give you vision on places you're not at, basically. But, uh, yeah. And I suppose you cannot cross the lava part? No. No, you cannot uh, sail the lava, I don't think. Nope. Nope. The pigs are not lava proof? <coughs> What, sorry? The pigs are not lava proof? Nope, <laughs> nobody is. So um, there's some uh, some natural enemies here, which I should be able to beat. Let's have a look. They have 265 and I have 380 army power. So this is the first battle, guys. Do you want to go up close and see the manual combat? Of course. Of course. Of course. No, there we go. I'm not going to do this the entire game, by the way, because this takes a lot of time. Oh yeah, here we have some shield guys. Let's see what they do. Base 90% of the time you become stunned. Defense mode after use, okay. Javelin, so these can throw stuff. This is the amount of turns they take to do it. So uh, one ball is quite nice actually, and they can do it multiple times, depending on how much move they have left. Uh, these are the shield guys as well. What are these archers? All right, shoot bow. All right, let's... Um, <coughs> this is our ruler, and he has a melee strike. All right, let's move uh, him forward. Let's move the shield guys forward. It's a bit like chess. Yeah, and let's have the ranged units hang back a little bit. And then uh, <coughs> let the other guys... Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, this guy needs to be in... Defense mode, or is this a was this a buff to so many base? Ninety percent of target will come stunned. Enter defense mode after use. Indiana Roy says how to live. What game is that? This is uh, Age of Wonders Four. Defense mode, defense mode, defense mode, defense mode. So they gain some buffs from that as well. And turn. Yes. Now the move, all the enemy units move into this space, and now we can decide to attack them. Oh wait, why is they? They are not attacking. Well, I'm just gonna move up to them uh, oh, with our shield guys. And see, I'm not in range right now, so I'm gonna try to spend the least amount possible to get into range. I love how their tails are swinging. <laughs> <laughs> I missed, missed again. Probably because uh, these are blocking. Javelin attack. Let's just attack the frontal guy. Pop, pop, pop. What was that hit? 
This one can strike as well. That was a hit. Uh, this one can strike as well. Blop. Actually, yeah. And this one can strike this guy. Primal strike. And I think that's my turn. And now they, they get to do stuff. Does the primal strike <laughs> mean it does more damage? Yeah, it's like a skill, I think. Because of the primal hunter kind of thing? Yeah, I think it's because of the affinity. I'm not I'm not an expert on this game. I've played a little bit, but uh, I had to leave. What game is that? Indian Roy, this is uh, Age of Wonders. Age of Wonders, sir. What is this? Base 90% of target unit becoming stunned. What is base 90% of becoming stunned? Enter defense mode after use. Okay, let's try that, I guess. Stunned. Okay, that's convenient. Now we can shoot. Opa. Three times because we're in range. So that's quite a lot of damage. This guy can stun this guy as well. Hopefully. Yep, stunned as well. Let's get rid of the small units first then. Do you have to stay like within a certain range? <coughs> yes, because otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, I'll show you in a sec. But every skill that you do or attack that costs like one of the little balls that you see underneath and mm -hmm. movement also costs balls. So okay. that's, that's the amount of moves that you have in total. No. Oh, this guy's almost dying. So let's have him... Uh, Oh, he's too close now for this. Is there any heals that I have? Oh wait, I had a buff spell. Oh, okay, didn't have that yet. Never mind. Uh, let's see. Can we we can finish this guy off? Or should be able to at least. So in the bottom, the green thing is the health bar, and what is the my name tag is in the way. What is the gray thing on the left of the? Of like Avatar on the bottom. Which one? This one? Yeah, that one. This is the morale. Oh, the morale, okay. So, uh, if they have so low morale, they might... So you also have to keep them happy. Yeah, so if they have low morale, they might flee the battle. Ah, okay. So, for example, if you have uh, uh, units that are dependent on mana, for example, mm -hmm. um, then they can have very high, low morale if you're out of mana in the game. And then before you go into a battle, they might flee or they might, uh, they might turn against you. Uh, so you might have to fight them even. So stuff like that. See now this, this uh, you see the three balls underneath. <clears throat> if I have to move up closer, uh, I'm using uh, these to move. So this will cost, this will leave me with one, one movement tile. But I have to move up closer for us to be able to shoot. Otherwise, I will definitely miss. And the closer you are, uh, the less you will miss, obviously. But I'm really fighting this pretty poorly because I, I have I forgot I have like uh, mana addicted units, so I should have used the spell before so they have life steal and stuff and you know I'm I'm really fighting this poorly. But anyhow, um, let's just make sure this guy is dead. Mm -hmm. This guy will probably die now. Uh, yep. And then it's up to their hero. That's all I can do. So end turn, so the hero will kill my unit. What does the pinned mean? That you cannot move from the tile? Yeah, pinned <coughs> means uh, that you cannot uh, do um, uh, ranged attacks on them if you're a ranged unit because uh, you're in there. Uh, you're too close. You're too close. <coughs> and you can't, if you, run, if you run away, they get a free attack on you, basically. Ah, okay. So uh, yeah, that's how that works. <coughs> Let me see if I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just have to full-on attack this guy, I think, for, uh, for us to be able to kill him. Uh, next unit, and this will kill him, most likely. Pew. There you go. So, nobody died. We're still alive. All well, good. Nobody died, not of our team at least. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, probably there's a better way to play this. As you can see, I lost a lot of life now, so I can replay, for example, and have the computer do it automatically, so toggle auto combat, and then there's probably some stuff uh, I've done differently or they will do differently. See, they have a, like a better defensive setup, I guess. And they will probably lose less health. This guy moves up. 
goes in defensive mode. My hero charges forward, so it has more attack damage because it's charged. This gets an attack. Well, now we're getting started. I can speed it along as well. Plof, plof, plof. But yeah, but now my hero is the front line, so he takes a lot less. He has a lot of more life, so and a lot more defense, so he takes less damage. Here, there's a guy already dead. There you go. That's two. And then there's one more small unit left. And as you can see, they lost a lot less life as I did. So it's, this is a be far better outcome. So you have to get kind of good at it as well. Know what you're. You're and otherwise you can in. just let the computer solve it for <coughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> so now I've captured this human being and I can sell her remains, which means I also get the items, I think. Uh, and then I have to set some research, which is my next spell that I can use. Uh, I think Condemn is a very nice one. And then I have to pick a building to produce. I usually do an extra scout. And then as building wise, Let's start off with making some extra mana, because we're mana hungry, because we have to do a lot of spells. <clears throat> so I think that's a wise choice. Is mana the... the this is, yeah, so this is oh, mana. Oh, that one, okay. Uh, this is money, which you yeah. always kind of need for everything, to build buildings. So and gold, you, mana, what's the thing on the right, the 30 out of 30? This is the casting points. So the more you have for this, the more mm -hmm. you can uh, do like extra spells and stuff, mm. uh, which is a different menu that's over here. So now I can put this spell on and then this will channel basically mm -hmm. and it will cost mana as well uh, and and these uh, casting points and then next turn I will be able to do that spell and cast like a summon like a zealot which is an extra unit. Uh, this is Imperium, this is used for, um, uh, it's not available yet, I can show you later but it's uh, an additional affinity kind of, uh, that's why you chose your affinities, you can do some extra skills. Uh, yeah, we're going for condemnation. Uh, anything else that I missed? Yeah, this, these are your affinities, as you can see. So these give you certain researches and bonuses and stuff. Um, and also, if you find another species that has opposing affinities, they're less likely mm -hmm. to like you. So they will, they are less likely to work together with you, basically. So we are cats, and if we find if we find dogs, for example, then. Uh, well, if it's dogs with the same affinities, so. Uh, Keepers of Faith, you know, Empires of Order, and uh, they have a nature affinity with uh, a little bit of chaos, then they are less, uh, more likely to like us. But if they have like a, a dark affinity, that's the opposing affinity of uh, order affinity, then uh, they are less likely to like us, for example. Okay. Yeah. So depending on what, what the affinities of your species are, uh, and also we're, we're, our alignment is good, so we're creatures of good, basically. Uh, we like to do good. Oh, this sounds good, by the way. Army of pickles. <laughs> Army of what? Of pickles. Pickles, yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can also rename our city, I think. Uh, can we? Yeah, change city name. So what's our city? Uh, what's it called? Litter... Litter box. <laughs> Litter box. There you go. <laughs> now our city is called Litter Box. <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, that's kind of uh, how a turn works. And then, uh, oh, orders required. Let's have them uh, do as much fighting as possible. So any units that we can, I know there's a red line here. So that means there's a investor spawner here. So there will be some units to fight there. And then your hero gains experience, it gets stronger. Um, so yeah, that's quite cool. We can now summon a Zealot as well, which I will summon into my army here. And you can see that's a Zealot. This gives the armor, uh, the arm, army more power. And I can basically do that every turn, as long as I have enough mana. Um, and that's why it's pretty powerful, because you have a, a, quite a big army in the beginning, where you can do a lot of fights with, uh, which is very nice. Ah, so well, some mana before we up. continue, yes. let's <coughs> do another giveaway. Yes, very good. So uh, uh, you can go to this link if you want to participate in the giveaway, msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, uh, the giveaway link is also spanned in uh, our uh, buyer stream element spot in YouTube and Twitch. 
If you're not watching there, you can also try and find the YouTube link in the YouTube video description. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's it. You can still participate after this giveaway as well. I think we'll do one more, one or two. Yeah, before the end. Um, we have our next winner. And our next winner is Desmond. Desmond, congratulations. You also won a Steam Wallet code. So please keep an eye out in your mailbox and we will email you the code in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem it. Congrats. Very cool. Congratulations, sir. Back right. to the game. Back to the game. Uh, so yeah, I'll send this guy this way. Let's see what's here. See, there's, a, there's some kind of camp here, infestation spawner. It's bronze in this case, so well, I don't know, let's, let's, let's check it out. I don't have the movement for this turn, but uh, that will be next turn. So evil presence found. There's a story behind the evil presence as well, so you, if you're into lore, you can read all that. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I've, I've already done that in the past. So there's some free, free pickups, as you can see, that my scout is picking up right now. I have an extra scout, which I will set to explore. Uh, okay, so my scout is ready, so now I can look into maybe building an extra... What is this? Skirmisher unit? Why not? And I have my Imperium now. So this is the Imperium uh, spendage. So I can spend my Imperium on... <clears throat> uh, completing uh, my population growth faster uh, and that means I can claim a territory uh, like uh, and then get resources from it so here you can see what what the resources are uh, like so so now I get extra resources for this and I spent some uh, Imperium or I didn't spend Imperium in this case because my population grew naturally but I can uh, say attract population and spend 45 Imperium on that to grow my empire or I could spend it here, uh, which is uh, kind of like an affinity, uh, um, yeah, affinity skill tree, I guess. Um, my empire has an additional whispering stones from just uh, the basic affinities, I guess, because normally you don't have this. So that means a whispering stone is a stone that you can give to uh, other empires that you uh, encounter or free cities. Uh, and if you give them your Whispering Stone, they're more likely to start negotiations with you and like you and become your vassal in the end. Um, so this is not something you basically upgrade one by one because I see like for the... Normally, yeah, you have to go through the tree a little ah, okay. bit uh, because we don't have enough uh, affinity points yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, gives us, uh, per turn, we get plus six of this. And you can see the more affinity you have. So we have three of this, so this, this gains plus three per turn. Uh, this game's plus two, this plus one. So how uh, do we already get further in the gray one? So, yeah, so uh, because this game's plus six, uh, next turn we will have some options here, I think. Okay. So once... Um, so I'll, I'll save the Imperium for that, because we have to buy that skill. Uh, well, let's, let's check out the Brigand camp. 288 and 440, so that should be a decent fight. Um, I will auto combat it this time. Uh, victory, we only lost one tier two units. Um, I can live with that, I don't mind. There you go. And we are playing this on, uh, we will lose some more units than normal because we are playing on uh, uh, Brutal, I think. We gained a, a wand. Um, so it's the item that your hero can carry, which gives it a uh, magic missile that does 20, <laughs> 20 Mr. damage. Mr. Master says the makers of the game owe you a game people. <laughs> To give away for uh, making commercial for the game. Mm. Yeah, we're, this is unsponsored, by the way. Unsponsored, yes, yeah. sir. I'm just trying to explain you what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but I agree with you, Mr. Master Dux, they should. Yeah, oh well, you know, they should, so Michiel can also play it. Because he's <laughs> kind of curious about this game, but he's kind of not at the same time. Anyhow, uh, Army of Pickles. This is also a scout, so I will send him this way and hopefully he will automatically scout that way more. Um, then my hero has leveled up. <clears throat> so I can choose uh, what direction my hero wants to go, so I can also send him the way of the magic. Uh, I can still make him like a warrior or fighter. Uh, in this case, it usually depends a little bit on the items you have. So I will make it stronger by giving him the Robe of Resistance or in the st from the store. Oh, actually, I stole this from uh, some other guy. I don't know if, wait, I don't know if I can give you him You stole this. a horse? 
Yeah, so we killed we killed some units mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, and they gave us. Uh, we so we captured someone from those units in our uh, uh, in our prison, and then you can choose to uh, or we kill them, and and there we're in our in our crypt, and then you can sell the remains of the units, and then you will get the items that you uh, that the unit was carrying. Okay. So that's also an incentive to kill uh, like random units on the map and become stronger. <laughs> in this case, says, we once you get hooked to these games, it will be 3 a.m. and you're like one more yes. turn. <laughs> yes. I can so this gives us extra resistance and some status resistance, which is pretty good. Uh, seems like we killed a wizard uh, because we got an arcane orb. Well, uh, welcome, you know, welcome, Deba Drata. We didn't pick a, a wizard type. We, ch we picked a champion, but uh, still, uh, I mean, it's fine. I don't really care. Uh, Give him a magic wand, gives him some extra spells, makes him stronger. Uh, so yeah, it really depends on what you find. Uh, you can still ride, you can ride a horse as well now. Let's see what, tier one mount, tier one very fast movement, cavalry type, unit type. And the boar is, horse is the same. So let's keep the boar for now. Um, and as you can see, we gained some skills. So we gained some, uh, some damage stuff as well. Yeah, Which, uh, guys asking, Mark, do you know when Agisa, uh, I think, it kind of, for some reason, blocks the numbers, but I think it, it's the 007 one, rolls out for B650 boards. I think it depends on the exact model. For some, I think they should already be available. I believe Tomahawk already has it available. <coughs> um, but yeah, that should be rolling out um, for the other models as well soon. So it depends per model. Best to, to keep an eye on the, uh, on the support page and there you will see it pop up soon. Yep. Yeah, it should be soon in the Dutch guy. All right. Now so you if you go to that model on our website and click on support <coughs> there, you should be able to see it pop up soon. So now you can see these buildings have become boosted uh, because I built uh, a specific building that makes the, the next building become boosted and gives you kind of like a balanced direction. So I, now I can choose between storage house, which gives us more food production, which gives us more population uh, per turn, or um, yeah, which, which in addition makes you grow in resources and, and uh, land grabbing. Or we can gain knowledge, which ga uh, pushes our research a little bit faster. Um, so usually you just try to balance this out a little bit, but it's, it's very nice to use the boost stuff, so you save a lot of resources doing that, but you can also just choose to go a different direction. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, in this case, I'll do some extra population. Can't hurt. Um, and then enter. Here we found some extra resources. Executing auto move. So the other guy is now deciding where to move. Let's give him some time. Sometimes the game uh, is stuck a little bit. Ah, we found a lesser tied spirit. So we found an actual an, uh, unit. So yeah, I'll take a free unit, no problem at all. Add him to our army. Send him that way. Oh, actually, I don't think we can. Touch this, I'm afraid of SSC power. Well, so far, luckily, we haven't had any issues with that on, on our board. So it should be okay there. Mr. Master says, I still have BIOS update anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to have that. But in general, like if you're not experiencing any issues if you, or if you don't need like any updated support or high memory frequency support or anything like that, then there is not always a good reason to update your BIOS. Um, but if you, if you want to, you, you can definitely do it. I think if you just follow the steps properly, then you should be fine with updating the BIOS. Yeah, so here you can see the skill tree is now developing slowly. So we can uh, choose specification, uh, which is uh, if you in, in destroy an infestation, which we just did, we got all the items from that and stuff. Um, it makes it easier to conquer a free city, basically. It gives you extra relations and stuff. Uh, we haven't found a free city yet, so uh, for now this is not very useful yet. Uh, this makes it so units can embark uh, and cross water. Well, this is a, a lava map, so I don't think we'll be needing that. Um, so is there also now, a cross lava <laughs> yeah. variant on this? <laughs> yeah, no, there's none. No. Um, so that's why the lava makes it interesting, right? So you can just cross the, the water and, and, and start battling and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, for now, I, I won't do anything there because I just want to save my Imperium for when, it, when I can actually use it. 
Um, let's see. Ramen Rider says, I always update my BIOS. Yeah, if you're comfortable with it, usually the newer BIOS versions give you um, better support for certain things, sometimes improved memory speed. So if you're comfortable with it, you can definitely update your BIOS, then um, definitely do so. But usually people are uncomfortable with updating their BIOS if you're not experiencing any issues. You don't need to do it, of course. Um, but personally, I always go for the BIOS updates myself as well. Oh, here you can actually see, oh, uh, you can't see it that well yet. I'll send my unit there. But there's uh, an Ancient Wonder, which is a Mage Class Forest in this case. Uh, if you capture this tile, uh, with your, uh, if you attach it to your land, or you can build an outpost here, uh, you basically take it over and you gain some special resources and sometimes even some special units you can build uh, that sometimes can get really strong. Uh, and sometimes they're not very useful depending on how far you are in the game. But uh, yeah, it's just a cool addition. Uh, they do give you a lot of resources though, uh, depending on the wonder. Um, so that would be nice to take in the future. Uh, let, let's see if we can almost expand yet. Yeah, so for 30 I can expand my population and build some new resources here. Uh, so I can choose a gold mine or a forester. Um, there's a gold vein here, so that's why I picked this piece of land, because it's uh, it gives you plus 10 gold, uh, which is what we will need eventually. So I will just buy a you will get the bonus non, uh, regardless of what you build. So you, you don't, you're not required to build like a gold mine here unless you're really in need of gold. So I will just go with the balanced option and uh, pick a forester. So we get a bit of everything. Um, there's some orders required here. This guy's still scouting. Let's have him auto move, I guess. Ooh, some. Hey, we found a new. Uh, New free city. Who? And free they're also city? cats. Nice. <laughs> Chieftain Connor Grotvalk of the free city Hartheim greets you with some reverence. Salutations. Um, anyway, I can give them uh, my wish to bring stone and start negotiations. Uh, can we already see if they like us because they have like overlap with. Uh... Yes, so you can see that here. Uh, they do like us, relations are good. Uh, because they have the same alignment, so that means they're also uh, going for the, the good side. They're trying to be good, good cats. And uh, let's see, ruler of origin, champion of the people. So we're, we both have champions as our rulers. Um, so that gives us the positive modifiers. So they're mm -hmm. already plus 200, which is very nice to have. Uh, so they're friendly cats to us. Yes, they're friendly <coughs> nice. to us now. Uh, as you can see here, this is, how, this is how friendly. So this will be war. This is neutral. Uh, the more it gets here, this is a pact of uh, cooperation, which gives you uh, open borders, uh, trading is enabled, uh, stuff like that. And then this will give you an allegiance with some more, uh, you know, some more. So instead of like the European do. Union, you would have the feline union. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then a in the end, once you reach this, they become a pack. They, they get a pack of pact of vassalage, so you basically vassalize them, and then you can choose what to do with that. There's some levels to that as well, but they will also start giving you their resources and stuff. And then in the end, you can decide uh, once you're far enough to actually integrate them in your uh, in your uh, society, and then you can use their armies and stuff as well. And uh, uh, you get even more resources. Uh, and then you, there's a city limit here, so we can have three cities. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a very nice bonus to have. Um, so yeah, nothing else really happened, because you can see here not, the rest is not finished yet. Uh, oh, and it crashed. <laughs> yeah, it happens, it's still a new game. At home you had this a lot more, right? <coughs> yeah, but it's more. I think it's more due to my PC. Uh, I'm not sure though. Uh, but yeah, let's just relaunch it. There is a nice feature on the game though, which is uh, I can just resume. <coughs> I will show you that in a sec. Or it's on an update or something. Because it's still very new, right? When did it launch again? Yeah, it launched last week. Ah, so okay. it's very new. Let's hope they resolve it soon. And I'm also putting it on highest settings and stuff, which is not recommended, uh, I think, uh, for the crashing, preventing the crashing. 
Um, so yeah, it happens sometimes. The crashes on my PC are a lot worse, but uh, uh, yeah, they will fix that eventually with hot fixes and stuff. It's already a lot better than it's been. Uh, all right, let's return. Okay. Mr. Mastodoc says, set were used to games being released broken. Yeah, it depends, it depends a bit from title to title, but some indeed have a lot of issues in the, in the beginning. Oh, I think this is the story. Oh, some yeah. just well, feel a bit rushed in that sense. <coughs> you can see the story here. I hope there's audio. The power there should be. Time has returned. Free from their imprisonment, ancient wizard kings come, seeking lost magics and new realms to conquer, turning all whom they encounter by choice. Uh, anyway, Varine is asking, is the 7900X okay for streaming games and gameplay rendering? So you mean like streaming and gaming at the same time on a PC? But yeah, 7900X is a 12 core, so you could very well do that. Something you could also consider is um, um, have the encoding done by your graphics card. Depends a bit on what graphics card you have, but like the, the newer NVIDIA cards are usually very good at encoding as well. So that's also something you could consider. Um, but yeah, you, on a 7900X you could definitely also do that on your CPU while gaming. Because you have plenty of cores on that CPU. Alright. Let's see if, it's, if my game is uh, auto-saved. Yeah, it is. See, now we can just continue again <coughs> and jump back in. There you go. All we have to do is enter. Uh, let's see, nothing really new here. Oh, it, it's backtracking a little bit, as you can see. Uh, so we already had this done. We picked this already. Uh, we already did the, yes, okay, fine. Uh, we picked this up and explore it this way, this guy. Join this guy, and then oh, this guy anime. was auto exploring, and turn. <coughs> now to find the new city. So yeah, it's backtracking a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're already back on track. So uh, right now we can do something else in the skill tree. Founding or absorbing cities take. It takes minus two turns. Uh, newly founded or absorbing cities gain plus one population. Or destroying the infestation or conquering free city uh, grants a stacking 300 relations to all other free cities for 10 turns. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with BC that. BC Murray says, I got used to broken games early uh, on with Atari and uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. At least these days you have patches. Yeah, it definitely helped over time. I think with Atari there was also a game that they had like a, a ton of copies that they eventually like buried somewhere in the desert or something. <coughs> I think they found them later on again. <laughs> yeah, E.T. indeed. That was the one. <laughs> but that was for Atari, right? <laughs> was a good story. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, uh, the wonder. Uh, that we were looking at. So uh, the astral flows are a magical currents in the astral sea that connects all the worlds. I still have so a copy. Cool. Blah blah blah. <laughs> There's a whole story to it, but basically what it says is it counts as a conduit, which is a uh, uh, mana regenerating uh, uh, item, and it gives you plus five and plus uh, imperium plus twenty mana, which is a lot of resources for one tile, and five happiness in your empire. Uh, gains uh, plus two mana per conduit in your city domain. So if you find other conduits or build them, uh, you will gain even more mana. So it's kind of, since we're a mana hungry species with a lot of spells in the future, uh, we should take this as soon as possible. But it is occupied. Um, so we need, to, uh, we need to clear this out. So uh, next turn we can move our hero in and hopefully we're strong enough to clear this out. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Should be an easy win, right? I hope so. <laughs> There you go, we found another uh, Lesser Tide Spirit, which you can add to our army, that's very nice. Uh, I think we have to start building two armies now, because uh, let's, let's just have them explore, I guess, as well, because it's a free unit anyway. Summon Zealot, 
Let's uh, reinforce this guy. <clears throat> now, this is one of the random events that happens. Um, so the, uh, the other city that we found uh, wanted to celebrate uh, uh, a god here. And uh, you can choose to sponsor the festivities and gain relationships. Or uh, you can lose Imperium and gain relationships. Or you can uh, lose knowledge. Or you can just say, like, fuck you. Uh, you know, I don't care about you. And we lose. No, let's sponsor the kitty celebrations. Uh, let's sponsor the celebration with some cash. And off you go. Uh, good news, proceed. We hit the next level and we have a pact of uh, uh, loyalty now. Which so we're even orders. better friends with our fellow kitties? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we can also do a. Uh, well, this is kind of cheap, it costs 35 Imperium, so let's boost Allegiance a little bit more. So next turn we have, uh, have some more, so hopefully we can get to uh, vassalize them and we get to see that within this uh, gameplay. I can also choose a new uh, new piece of, of land. I will start building uh, towards this uh, magical forest that we have. <coughs> so I will build a quarry here. We need a quarry anyway at some point. And we don't have any other... Oh, we missed this one, so we need to rebuild that at some point. But uh, let's see if we can add population. There, now we have both. So, um, if I'm going too fast, please uh, ask questions. I don't mind. Uh, we have to set up a building because the one we did was uh, was finished. Uh, so we can boost our population once more and then do that one as well. Just queue it, why not? Um, and then, let's see, let's make our army as strong as possible. They're both melee strikers, the zealots. Yeah, let's have some uh, disparity. Okay, let's move into this uh, ancient wonder and explore. And then we discovered a thicket of trees of pure magical crystal. Um, let's see, the more disoriented and twisted this maze becomes, the forest of crystal and light confuses you in a sense of direction. As you and your army stumble through the maze, you are not sure what, uh, what is what uh, and what is not a path or merely a reflection. Uh, blinking in the light, you realize the maze would be an ideal place for an ambush. Something approaches. And then you can choose ambush or not, retreating shows weakness, uh, but as you can see this is a high risk battle, so that means my army is pretty much uh, outnumbered and not strong enough yet. So basically or, then you're doomed? Yeah, <coughs> or we can use magic to, uh, to use the reflectable mage to our advantage. Also uh, high risk, even which higher we, risk? Yeah, which we cannot do <laughs> because we ha don't have enough mana at the moment. Uh, so we can just retreat for now. <coughs> and wait until our army gets a little bit stronger and uh, uh, we should be able to do it. Uh, I think our army becomes stronger if we cast a spell or use magic and then they get live steal. So they should maybe, uh, once I spawn this zealot, uh, be able to do it. Uh, yeah, so see. anyway, for the giveaway, the winners, they will indeed get an email with the code and, and some instructions on how they can redeem their code. Uh, we also call out the winners on stream. So yeah, I usually just have, if I have like spare units, I just let them explore uh, so they can find, so I find like friendly cities as, as fast as possible. Uh, usually helps your development a little bit. Here I, says, I remember <coughs> trying to play Age of Wonders 1. <laughs> I was a kid, didn't understand anything. <laughs> yeah. Let me hard. see, when was that? Age of Wonders. You did that or? No, I have played, let me see. 1999 it was launched, the first one. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, it's been a while. I think that's like close to, no, Age Vampire is even older, I think, right? Mm. Uh, uh, first one. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, Age Vampires is way older, I think. No, 97, not way older. Ah, so it's not too bad. All right. Oh, so two years difference, but yeah, Age Vampire is a little bit older than Age of Wonders. So let's see, this army has 500 points, 400 here. <coughs> so that's a little bit iffy, but I can have some support from this guy. So maybe then, ah, still not. Uh, so, but let's put him in, in this, oh, actually let's put him here. So this is a watchtower, so this reveals a lot of stuff here. And this reveals a lot of units, a lot of strong units as well. Here are tier five units. What tier are we currently? Uh, tier for one. For our units at least. Uh, tier one. 
So this All gonna, of them? This is going to take a while. Uh, yeah, most of them, yeah. So this is yeah. going to take a while before we can clear this. Uh, and they're also guarding resources, usually. So, uh, yeah, once we start expanding this way, uh, it would be interesting to expand, expand this way because there's a lot of extra resources in these tiles. Uh, and there's even an ancient wonder here. Another one that gains us research and stuff. Uh, but yeah, for now, uh, yeah, I can't really clear this yet. Uh, this one is 500, so this would be the first one to clear, I think. And this one is 520. So yeah, oh, 430. Uh, that might be doable, actually. Let's uh, start moving that direction then. And see if we can clear that soon. Uh, and then turn. <coughs> right, a bunch of stuff has happened. Uh, I can summon a zealot now. A zealot, sorry. Uh, so I can put that here as well. So he's already there. Uh, this guy needs orders. So that's going to become my second army, which is basically all zealots. Then I can move my hero to a tile, and they should be able to support each other in battle and you, if you click this button you can see the banners light up so yes they will support each other in battle now so i can attack this monster and see low risk battle so we auto combat this and then he's dead and i lost two zealots but i can spawn them in anyway as much as i want so uh, uh, i don't care <laughs> um, so yeah close um, there's some uh, some stuff here Large pickup, so this will probably be some weapons or stuff like that. So we will pick that up once we get the movement points to do that. And uh, let's continue because nothing else is, is everything else is still building. Oh, your claim province has been captured. So oh, some bad guys. Bad guy has popped up. Oh. And we have minus relations, minus 626. So that's quite bad uh, because they're really opposites of what we are apparently. They also um, look very evil. Uh, we have now grievances with them, so we have a reason to start a war. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is. I can send them a welcome gift and try to turn their uh, no, 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 turn no, their no. stuff. But a threatening they, welcome, please. <laughs> threatening <laughs> welcome. Okay, let's uh, let's give it a threatening welcome. So this is uh, not a free city, but they are uh, creatures of evil. Um, that's why they have minus 100. Yeah, I already dislike them. They are a chaos affinity empire, so that's the opposite to the order affinity that we have. Uh, and they are they do have nature affinity as well. So we have some comparisons, but uh, for now we're at peace, but it's more No, no, more no, negative. more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just give it some time and we'll probably be at war with this faction. Uh, but, but yeah, usually they start out pretty strong. So um, well, let's wait, wait with that until we have some vassals and stuff. Um, but I think it's time to call it a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I explained it pretty well. I mean, you go from there. Um, it's, it's quite a fun game. You can spend a lot of time in, in here and just try to... Uh, I spent one game trying to get, every, get everybody to friend me, for example. And you can build like a, you can build like a faction that does that very easily or uh, has a hard time doing that and then still try it. So you can make your own challenges in the game a little bit. Uh, I also thought the other day that I made a really strong faction and then they ended up being very shit so um, yeah you never know it's it's quite cool I like this game um, anyhow so Ralph, do we do another week, giveaway yeah <clears throat> still uh, we're uh, discussing topics so at this point it's yet to be announced but before we leave today let's pick one more winner for the giveaway yes sir Last winner for today, guys. There you go, Ralph. Mr. or Mrs. Starview. Congratulations, congratulations Starview. <coughs> you also won a Steam Wallet code, uh, code. So congrats again to all the winners. Keep an eye out our mailbox. Then we'll email the codes to you with some instructions on how to redeem them. If you didn't win this time, make sure to join again next week because, of course, we'll also have a new giveaway. Yes. And we will also make sure to have an, uh, an interesting topic to talk about. So same places we'll stream on, same time. And uh, thank you so much for watching today. And goodbye. Bye-bye, guys. Ciao, ciao.